Well, hello, welcome to the Max channel. Uh, we are actually working in the garden today. You see our corn, you see all our silage tarps, and you see Ms. Mag way back there doing some fertilization of cucumbers and getting on to Jennings at the same time. Today we're going to talk about the corn though. Why some people's corn not germinate? So they'll plant it and say, man, I'm missing this spot, this spot, that spot. Why is it not germinating? Uh, or is the seeds bad? And then we're going to talk about, okay, so we've gotten them to this point. What do you do now? Corn is a nitrogen grabber. It's a thief of nitrogen. It loves nitrogen. It is a grass, so it wants to grow, and you want to give it the atmosphere that it wants to grow. So today's video is all about corn. Okay guys, so just like we said in the intro, we are actually doing a video on corn. Now, corn, the reason people see corn not germinate or quote unquote germinate, or we think we have bad seed is because you may be planting your corn too early. Corn likes very warm soil, uh, tends to be kind of like sweet potatoes for us. It seems like they want to grow in the, the 65, 75, 85 degree, come here Jay, uh, 85 degree temperatures. They want warm, good soil. Now, the other thing about corn is it wants to grow tight with each other. So as it germinates, and again, as it gets taller, it needs itself to pollinate. It needs other, the cross-pollination with the rows. And we'll talk more about that as, as the weeks and months go ahead. So the reason we may not be germinating is maybe we're not putting the seed close enough together. Maybe the temperatures are not quite right. Maybe um, you don't have the seeds buried at a good depth and it needs to be kind of mounded up around it. So you see we planted ours very tight, basically on 10 inch centers really, very, very tight. Tighter than what some people mostly do, but uh, we wanted it very tight. And you see a lot of the germination really happened. We had no problem with germination. Now, here's what I did to prep the soil. We silaged tarps. Videos are always fun with kids. Um, so what we did was to prep this. This is why it probably germinated better than most. When we come in and did this, we pulled the stylus tarp back. Then we come in and put chicken bedding, which is nitrogen rich. Put cottonseed meal, which was nitrogen rich. And then also we uh, pretty much mounted up next to the row with high quality topsoil. Now, let's think about that for a second. We put tons of nitrogen. We've had good quality soil. So there's the germination rate. It's looking great. Plus it's very, very warm. So now germination's done. What, what's our next step? How do we keep this corn from thrive, the corn from dying? How do we keep it from falling over? How do we keep a good, pretty stalk all the way through the season to make beautiful ears of corn? Well, okay, so with corn, you want to feed it. Not just when you start it, not just as it's fisting to come to the end. Unlike most vegetables, it likes to be fed. Now, we try to do as much non-gmo seed corn you could find it's hard to find a non-gmo or heirloom corn but we we managed to find some we then we have to use some corn that's local that's a sweet corn so we've got a mix of it all throughout here with different rows now here's the kicker though when we do the sweet corn and when we plant it we're throwing that nitrogen down with cottonseed meal and chicken fertilizer now as it's right here to this point so let's go back and look at it we have gotten to a point where we do a heavy, heavy fertilization, organic fertilizer. <clears throat> but we come through and we'll put more cottonseed meal pretty much all through these rows. That's what the dark, the lightness is now. This is not bad quality soil. This is where that cottonseed meal and that fertilization was already there. So you can see the top soil is the dark and then the light is all the, the nutrients we've been adding to it. Well, guess what we're fishing to do? We're fishing to add fish emulsion all the way down these rows. And then we're going to come back and put cottonseed meal right beside it. So we're putting a fast, rapid release nitrogen in the soil, which is the fish emulsion. And then we're going to put the cottonseed meal, which tends to be a little bit more of a slow release. Another item is blood meal. You could use blood meal. It's a very good, slow release um, of nitrogen. Uh, and so, plus, it, it's kind of costly. So we use fish emulsion, kind of like a... We've read in our books back years ago where they used to bury fish, cut fish and bury them all the way underneath the, uh, the corn rows. Well, but then we really focus on putting, you know, every two to three weeks, we're checking it, seeing if we need to add more. We're making sure the, the leaves are not wilting. We're making sure this corn can thrive. 
because it needs a lot of nutrients to grow corn that I can find and my corn especially I might be a bad grower but that's what it seems like to me that to get it on up let's get some let's get some thickness to the stalks and you need to go ahead and push some heavy, heavy nitrogen to it so we're gonna spread it with fish emulsion first then we'll come through with cottonseed meal and that's just two good tips that we use here on the farm for corn now as we get closer to the time where they start getting the stalks up we'll talk about pollination cross pollination and then we're going to talk about self pollination bus pollinating the corn so we'll take pits from others and put it on the other if we need to because we want to make sure those ears are full and thick so it's okay you don't need to set it up like the rest of your garden it doesn't need to be you know 30 inch beds with a 12 foot walkway you need to set it up you know a two or three inch bed with a 10 foot 10 second i mean 10 uh 10 foot 10 foot walkway 10 inch walkway and then basically from that 10 inch walkway each row starts look i mean again look at the pollination i've had i mean the germination i've had and then as we talk about germination then we talk about pollination pollination coming uh, a little further in their maturity basically but as they get taller they're going to need each other to make those kind of corn that we want the big kernel corns because one will feed the other with cross pollination so just make sure when you plant plant them tight plant them together Plant them in good quality soil with uh, good nitrogen uh, being added to it on a pretty routine basis. So, again, hope this little video helped. Just a good quality video about how corn needs to be warm when you're trying to germinate it. You need to make sure, if, you, if you're doing a smaller section of ground, you can even soak your corn. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't soak mine just because it's bigger rows, but you can soak it if you're doing a smaller patch. Remember, plant it in a square because it has to pollinate across each other. So don't just put rows out of corn because that won't work either. And just make sure you have a nitrogen-rich soil. Chicken fertilizer, blood meal, fish emulsion, cottonseed meal, all of it. All of those things are very good for nitrogen. Just to show you how far this goes, basically this is a one-gallon uh, mixer, basically, and um. Uh, I used I used to put about four ounces or so of the fish emulsion in one of these and then then pretty much uh, fill it up with a gallon. I went through about six gallons, so about 24 ounces or so. Um, that's not a lot when you buy a fish emulsion for about 20, 20 to 25 bucks for a gallon. <clears throat> and when you fertilize that, that size corn, and that's a, that's a lot of rows, it's about 12 rows. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope that helps on your corn and hint for this season to try to go tons of it. Thank you so much. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.